Hi, welcome everybody. I'm John with Quilt Easy. I've got Lindsay here with Hello. me. Hello. I've got Tiana. Hi. And we've got Doodlebug. <laughs> this is our calming influence for this <laughs> recording. So we have the opportunity today to interview Terry Williams, AKA Oregon Quilt Woman. She's uh, on Zoom with us and we're gonna be recording her we're going to be getting to know a lot about her, we hope. Some of us, like myself, already know Terry very well. She was one of our very first installers, uh, dealers, and she's had the unfortunate experience of going on the road with me to go do shows everywhere from Houston to California. <laughs> and it's uh, been a treat for both of us. I think in spite of all of that, I think we still get along well. So. With that said, I think we'll start with the questions. Terry, I hope you're ready. We have some good questions for you. Okay. All right, Terry, what interested you to become a quilter? You know, I was in the Marine Corps. I was stationed in, in Virginia at Quantico, and I was bored one day and I was going down the strip mall and there was a little quilt store there. So I wandered on in because I was going in every store. And those ladies grabbed a hold of me. <laughs> and they talked me into taking quilt classes. So I bought the mat and the rotary cutters and all of that stuff. And we hand sewed three pillowcases and hand quilted them. And that's how I got started quilting was I took this class out of pure boredom. And they were so much fun. But the thing about it is, is and I remember back very distinctly, this was in 87. And the women are sitting around and they're talking and they're saying, those long arms, they'll just never last. <laughs> That's about the time that they came out real strong. And if I had known then what I know now, I'd have bought a long arm back in 87. But anyways, I hauled all this stuff for around for about 15 years. And I moved to Oregon and there we go, got started but I didn't quilt anything for all those years and but just hauled all that stuff around that they had me buy. Huh. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's cool. So tell us about Oregon Quilt Woman. <laughs> My husband always called me Quilt Woman. All right, Quilt Woman, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm filing for a business license and this is business name and I went, <clears throat> okay. Um, Oregon Quilt cool Woman. <laughs> and <laughs> seriously, that's how the name got started is I was going into selling long arm machines and I needed a business card and a business license. And that's how, literally how it got started. So how long have you really been quilting then? I took my first classes in 87 and then I picked it back up in 2004, 2005 when we moved to Oregon. A uh, neighbor stepped in and said she was headed to the local quilt store and asked if I wanted to tag along, and of course I did. And we walked in the door, and on the back wall, they had the Balgero heart, and it was in blues and yellows, and it was just gorgeous. And I, I grabbed her arm, I says, I want to make that. And she says, okay, let's go. And she had me sucked in. <laughs> so anyways, that's, that's actually how I got started into so I was going to take their classes, their beginner classes, and learn how to quilt again, and took it home, was so excited. I had the top made in four days. Oh, wow. wow. That's impressive. I didn't wait. How long have you had your long arm, Terry? I made my fourth quilt in that month that I went to the quilt store, wow. and husband asked me, he says, you're not going to stop, and I said no, and he didn't want to hear four-letter words going through a six-inch hole. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, he just told me to go shopping for the right equipment. And so I went shopping for my first long arm and bought it, brought it home, paced back and forth for six months. Never quilted a thing. I turn it on, I run it, turn it back up. There was only one other one in the whole area. I didn't have classes. I didn't have anybody to teach me. And then my neighbor that took me to the quilt store, her, her niece stopped in. And Shelly come over and she grabbed a hold of that machine and she just ran it. And she says, this is a great machine. And she's doing her designs and on and on and on. 
And I never let go after that. I had somebody to just hold my hand for about 20 minutes and that's all it took. And then I started in, I started quilting for other people. I quilted uh, for about two and a half years uh, for other people. And I couldn't draw a stick figure. So everything I did had to be done with uh, the boards and stylus or laser light and patterns. I would get on the internet, I'd print out looking for patterns, I'd print out anything, figure out how to make them continuous, and that's how I custom quilted. Wow. wow. Um, if you were to choose, what would be your favorite type of fabric? Batiks, always batiks. It's, they're always different, there's no two alike, and I just love the coloring but I like a real solid big background. I like the quilt behind you. That gives me a lot of space to quilt in. Then I'm intrigued. So do you have a favorite design? Yes, it's by Anne Bright and it's called Wild Flowers with an S. She has wild flower and wild flowers. And that is my favorite overall design. It's just, it does not look pentagraph. It looks free motion, it's, it's floral, it's feminine, anything feminine. If I have to do a male quilt, I just get stumped. But if I, if it's, if I can go feminine, I'm all in. Um, did you ever use paper pantographs? Paper pantographs, absolutely. Um, yes, it, it's what I had when I got started in the gym. I still don't quilt free motion. I'm not artistic. I'm not that person. For me, having a, the computer is is everything. So you did. You mentioned that you had done stylus and templates as well. Yes, I did. Uh, when I wanted perfect circle stars and hearts, and then absolutely, I mean, they were really just heaven sent when I found those and could get the perfect circle and those kind of things. I love the boards. I really did. So when did you add automation to your long arm? When Joe called. <laughs> and <laughs> Joe called and said that he needed somebody to test his, his system out. And so he sent one to me and I dropped the screen on my carpet and I shattered it. I sent it back and said, let's talk about that buddies. And they did, they toughened it up, they sent it back, and I played and played and played for endless hours. I would stay up all night long and just play with the butler. It was so much fun. I could get the feathers that I wanted. I could get the things that, that I had dreamed about doing. And it just opened my whole world up and made it fun. So what's your favorite part about owning a butler? Being able to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I want. No, I absolutely love it. It gives me everything I need and want. I can I can do my detail custom work and I can do my freehand stippling and ditching and I can still run the machine both ways, but I absolutely love getting the patterns exactly where I want them. What is the feature that you use most on your butler? Mm, layout pattern at a quilt, layout pattern at at home. It's literally block by block, triangles, circles, squares, and I completely, I pretty much only custom quilt except for one time at Christmas. My husband said, can you whip out a quilt for so-and-so for Christmas? We're talking like four days away. And <laughs> I've got a house to clean, I've got company coming, and I'm like, okay. So I had a top. And I threw it on the machine and I literally, I would set it to run and I went and cleaned my house, two floors. And I would hear, I would hear the machine stop running and I'd run back up. And if it had run out of thread, I could rethread the machine, take it back to where it ran out. I could pick the pattern back up and I quilted a king size quilt in seven and a half hours while I cleaned my house. Wow. And literally had the quilt ready to go for Christmas. And let me tell you, that was heaven sent that day. But I absolutely love being able to do that. But I love sitting there watching it run. I love learning from the robot, the way it runs. It actually teaches you so much. Huh. Uh, I've never thought about it that way. Yeah. yeah.
Well, when you look at it and you have to run a continuous pattern, if you sit there and watch how the machine draws it, then you can practice it and it actually helps you. What's your favorite feature? Do you have a favorite feature of the butler? No, I really just love the butler. What feature has saved you the most time when you've been quilting? Uh, if I have to whip out a quilt, the pentagraph feature. Um, when you're custom quilting, there's nothing fast about it, but it sure is fun to be able to nail it and have it perfect. And for me, I'm a quilter by heart first and everything else is second. And being able to just nail it is, is so much fun. Uh, what advice can you give uh, people who are looking into adding automation? What I tell people, because I sold new machines and I sold the automation, was if they couldn't afford both, buy the machine and practice and play with it. And if you get really good, maybe you don't even want the butler. But let me tell you, if you're like me, I can't draw a stick figure, learn your abilities. And at the end, if your abilities don't give you everything that you want, computerize it because it'll give you everything. So it looks like you are in a motel somewhere. Are you on vacation? Are we bothering you? Of course you're bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm up doing an install. I'm in Olympia, Washington. And John Collins says, you know, let's jump on this quick Zoom. And I'm like, well, okay, I'm in the hotel. But anyways, yeah, I've come up to Olympia. We put a, I put a butler on a gamel and with perfect stitch on it. And we had class yesterday and it was so much fun. This gal was just a blast. Anyways, I got it all done in one day. So I'm going to head out, head back over to Spokane and I'm going to install a butler tomorrow. Have dinner with my friend tonight and kind of goof off in Spokane. And then I'm headed home probably late Saturday, Sunday morning. Is there something in particular that you enjoy most about installs? Um, I really like getting to know the customers because, you know, you see them at a show, you visit with them for 10, 20 minutes, and then they buy from you. It's amazing they spend that kind of money with you in such a short time. But um, then you get to go to lunch while you're doing the install. You get to visit. You get to find out about them personally in their personal life. So they're not customers. These are all friends. And it's fun to go back to a place like Spokane that I've been going to for 11 years and get together with the girls and call a lunch. When you call a lunch, you better have three or four tables ready. And we all get together and visit and talk. And there you go. Is there a certain machine you install the butlers on or does it go on all? Like, what do you do with that? Um, butler will go on any machine. I put it on just about, you know, I've put it on just about every machine on the market except for actually Nolting. I haven't run into any Nolting, so they're just not up in this area real big. So, but it'll go on any machine. So you also upgrade stitch regulators on machines, is that correct? I do. I upgraded Gamel 203. That machine's like 30 years old and give it stitch regulation and brought it all up to date. And, you know, it's really funny because the lady paid $20,000 back then for them. Yes. Oh my. And so they feel stuck. You know, that was a lot of money. It was bigger money then than it is today, but that's a lot of money. And to not have stitch regulation, the husbands are not gonna rebuy a new machine. And so to be able to give stitch regulation, she was just elated and, and actually cried. Okay, Terry, two more things. One, first of all, I always forget this, and I know this, I've known you for so long, but thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. Um, one other thing that you didn't really plug, you're an educator, and you've got what you call, we all affectionately call the hut. I do. And Tell us a little bit about that, what people have, the opportunity you provide to bring people up there, and tell us a little bit about that, if you would. What goes on in the hut stays in the hut. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't go too far. <laughs> okay, so, now, <laughs> no, 
the, the hut, I have two machines set up. One, I keep a quilt that I'm personally working on for me all the time. And like I said, I've had this, you know, hosta on the frame for three years. And then I have another machine set up where I have classes and people can come over. I do service. I have a table that raises and lowers and I work on the machines and, and it's the Martelli table. And I really like it because I, it's just, it's a workhorse too. And we have a kitchen and anyways, yeah, popcorn machine. And it's just, it really is a lot of fun. Okay, Terry, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule on an install trip and meeting with us today and us getting to be able to share a little bit about Oregon Quilt Woman. And thank you, you guys. You have taken really good care of me and I really appreciate each and every one of you. I really do, okay? So you're welcome up to the hut anytime I'm home. If I'm not on the road, that's where I'm spending my time.